things. When you're looking for photographs to convert into a scroll saw pattern, in my opinion, the larger the better because you can zoom in to a large photograph and still have a lot of detail. And that is the biggest benefit if you are making scroll saw patterns the way I'm teaching you here, which is on paper. And the same goes with this photograph. It's not quite as large, but it's definitely workable. On both of them, I plan to leave the background out since we're just concentrating. I mean, maybe in future videos I'll talk about backgrounds and then adding them into a scroll saw pattern. So that's enough talking, let's get started. And we're back. I wanted to explain, first of all, that when I work on patterns on paper, I use a piece of glass because you want a smooth surface under where you're doing this because as you're using your pen, you don't want it to make un any unintended jiggles in the line like where there would be texture. So uh, a clean piece of glass is an excellent surface. First thing you want to do is get a clean sheet of paper. And you get some, uh, some people call it carbon paper, some people call it transfer paper, but it's the darkest I've been able to find. And right about this time at the bottom of the screen, you'll be seeing where I get it from. I do get it off of Amazon. And I like the dark transfer paper because the dark lines make everything easier to see, so it kind of speaks for itself. But I try to cut them the size of a sheet of paper, but inevitably I don't. But uh, it covers up 99% of the clean sheet of paper. So the first thing I do is tape the carbon paper down on top of the clean sheet of paper underneath. You want to pull it taut so there's no wrinkles in there where it'll miss it'll miss a uh, line you're drawing like right here so I'm going to be pulling it taut when I tape the upper half now it won't completely get rid of a wrinkle this isn't really a wrinkle it's a fold in the way I got it because these transfer paper sheets coming very large size but I cut them down to traditional paper size for the most part and you'll see that crease there but that won't necessarily interfere with anything now when I I told you about when I do large detailed photos the benefit to that also in printing them out is you can do it in two pieces I start with one half at a time but I keep them next to each other I'm gonna cut off the white portions of both of these and that way I can have these butted up next to each other and I'll know where I'm going to be continuing when I get to the other side and this will all make more sense but let me and you may be wondering why I didn't do this before I started the recording but it's because I want you to see every single step I do so I'm going to turn this around just long enough to cut off those two white parts now I'm only working on one half at a time because they are printed out in two different sheets uh, but it is and what they call landscape format so it'll fit but we want to have the other piece up next to it so that we can see where the next line is going to continue and that glass surface is also good for cutting cutting the paper on <laughs> you know won't mar your tabletop okay so let me turn this around and I usually like to determine which half I'm going to do first I think I'm going to start with the upper half, but I'm still going to tape them together because I want to be able to see through it in case it does cover up a spot because there's very few spots on here that I can tape without covering something up. So that's the advantage to having transparent tape. I want to make sure it's lined up. So this will work for the most part, but you'll notice when I get to that seam between these, you'll see my finger come in and hold it down so the pen doesn't skip or at least it lessens the chances of that happening. I'm going to tape it a little high since we have this big white border. And I'm lining it up and lining up one edge. And then I put something heavy on there so it doesn't move while I tape it down. And the reason why I'm taping this down is we don't want it to move while we're doing it because once you move it, it's 
next to impossible to get it right back where you had it. And I do use painter's tape for this because I left it to use more than once because I'm using the, the lower half. I try to sometimes do a very light line across there to know when to stop. And again, that lower half is only to reference what not to go past. Right now I'm just attaching it to the paper, but I'm going to lift it up to make sure the paper is not uh, curled in any way. I'm going to smooth like this and then press that tape down. That way I know that that paper is laying flat. Okay, now we see where I drew the pen lines. Uh, right there and right there. And that tells me right where the edge is of that carbon paper underneath. Okay, I'm just gonna very lightly drag this across here so I know not to draw past that line because it would be a waste of time. You may not be able to see that line because it's so faint. And I don't usually have a, a starting point on any project, but if it's, if it's, uh, I say that, but if it's an animal or a person, I generally start with eyes. But since we're working on the upper half, the, the mare, not mayor, mare, female, mama horse, <laughs> that portion of the pattern is not on the half that has carbon paper underneath, so I'm gonna start with the, the fold here. It's always a bad thing when you go to edit a video and find out everything was out of focus. I'm really hoping it's in focus right now. And there's not a whole lot of detail to them. 99% uh, of scroll saw patterns you're doing are going to be, you're, you're just tracing the dark parts. It really is that simple. It's just knowing the premise of how a scroll saw pattern is made plays into it because you got to not have bloaters at least traditionally. Now here lately I, I intentionally add bloaters because I think it adds to realism on some of them. Most common examples of bloaters I include in portraits or whatever pictures is stars on a flag and the reflection uh, on an animal or a person's eye. You don't even need to keep a bloater for the reflection shine, light reflection shining off of an eye, you can use a simple white dot of paint on the backer to show where that light reflection is. But let me get back to the pattern. I'm just trying to get offer advice as I go. I really hope this is close enough for y'all to see, but there's not a whole lot of detail that I'm working on right this second. Okay, now when you get to areas like this, you can make it a floater if you want to, but what I do is I look for any shadows near it and then I just suggest the edges of it. And so if you decided you wanted to accurately color-wise stain this pattern or this as a finished piece, then the line we create would be a stopping point for that stain not to go past. It. That or just helps the eye know that there's a I believe the term is flame. I can't remember. I mentioned it in a past video, but I've slept since then. So I'm right now, now you, I talked about the shadow next to it, but because of the shape of it, I can get away with doing it that way. And I'm leaving an opening so that doesn't become a bloater, but your drill, you can put your pilot hole right here. So. That's one way you could do that to suggest, no, I believe it's called a blaze. I don't know what I called it earlier. Yeah, anytime you have a white patch like that or whatever on a horse, I uh, believe it's called a blaze. Now I'm going right into the mane, which is not laying down because it's short hair, so it's kind of like a mohawk. There are shadows that are kind of connected in here, but I'm breaking them up to make it less fragile. And I'm not trying to necessarily on this part trace every individual hair. I'm mainly suggesting the shape, uh, but you can do that however you would like to. Now I am seeing lighter and darker areas on the ear here, but I don't know how well they show up on camera. You cannot shade when doing a scroll saw pattern. You can either cut it out or you can't. So you gotta take that in mind when you're choosing areas to trace. I'm oftentimes 
inventing shadows that aren't there or separations that aren't there. Sometimes for stability, sometimes for realism. Now you want to suggest the uh, I'll do that from here. You want to suggest the the shape of that ear because if you left it look like let left it with just the shadow, it would look like this bowl has a torn up ear, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be fancy. Now you don't want to connect all the way up to there because it'll make this whole area really really brittle. It would only be holding on there. I say you don't want to, but it's clearly up to the designer how they want to do it. You can eliminate as much detail as you like, and you can include as much detail as you like. Uh, even as much as I like detail, there are times I eliminate detail because, you know, it's just less to mess with. Anytime you hear me being silent during a... I, I like to try to keep talking during these things so there's not dead air, it's just in my nature. But when you do find times where I'm not speaking during this video it's because I'm either thinking or I don't know what to say while I'm doing it because I don't want to be a broken record uh, okay I'm thinking now how I want to do this or the order I want to go in there doesn't have to be a certain order but I'm trying to do that now again the background's not going to be in this so I'm keeping that in mind when I do this so I'm going to connect this line here just well, there's a little bit of a ridge. And I'm going to stop on the other side of that eyelash. This area may be slightly brittle. And I might even make that thinner when I do the design because I probably brought that line down too far. But that just connected all this area into one cut. And so the fewer cuts, the more likely more people are to do it. Now there's a there are a bunch of shadows going through here that connect right up to here. I'm going to try to break that up a little bit so it's not real fragile. And while I'm by this eye, I, I just noticed that it had a little ridge here, but I don't want to bring it the whole way because I don't want to make that brittle. And I'm going to continue this line here that as I did earlier. And stop just short of that eye. Some of the shadows on the, the ridge of the nose I'm going to stop this one here and break it up here. Although that pattern is connected here, I mean the shadow, I'm choosing to break it up there to make it less fragile as well. Now there are some things that just may not show up on camera. There's a very light area of reflection of light here, so I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that. It's on the neck of the col uh, bolt. Bolt. I was thinking colt and foal at the same time. I don't know the gender of this horse, so I'm calling it a foal. And we'll lightly go into there to suggest the nose. In my opinion, in terms of complexity of scroll saw patterns, this one may rel be relatively easy, but maybe that's because I'm so used to the complexity of the designs I generally do. I may break up some of the patterns, and, or, or just, I keep saying patterns, uh, shadows in there. Okay, there's more of the ridge line as well as shadows. And I don't want to do overkill here, but I, it's hard for me not to trace what detail I see. So this is kind of a unique looking shape, but it is there. Now this next shadow is going to suggest the other side of his head, or snout portion of his head. So I can do a single line here, and I'm going to stop just short of that nose area because I don't want it to crowd with detail. Now this shadow is obviously on the neck, but it doesn't go all over the edge, so that may be compensated with compensated for later. So I'm just going to break this up. Now the nostrils 
are, are by themselves. They don't appear to be, except for right here, attached to any other dark area, but I think I might try to somewhat separate that so it's, again, less fragile. I can suggest that it's going into there, but I'm not going to connect it. And don't want to get too close to the areas that we know are light because, again, I will be repeating myself a lot <laughs> because I like to give my thought process as I'm thinking it. And you'll notice I brought these lines partway into that light area on the neck. It's just to suggest that there's something slightly overlapping that line. And that's why I chose to do that. I'm hoping this is zoomed in far enough for you to see that. And the process of thinking, I get, I found what I call a mistake. <laughs> And that will happen no matter how long you've been doing patterns. Unless you overthink every line you make. Um, I'm noticing there's more very faint, what lighter areas in the neck here. But one thing, now there's a bunch of little hairs coming off of that, the chin of this pole. And I just think those would be way too small. A lot of my horse patterns, I ignore those hairs unless they are real close up in the in the design itself. So I'm gonna take advantage of that area to separate the neck shadow from the 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 nose of the horse. So I'm gonna connect from here to here, having a light area here. So I will have to eliminate the line where they where they connect. So the and I make little notes to myself as I'm making the pattern. I will scribble through the area that I want to eliminate in the final design. And if I neglect to do that, I will do it while I'm working on the computer portion. So I'll do that now. And I zoomed in slightly. I'm hoping it's not blurred. Taking advantage of where those hairs are. And right here is where I'm going to eliminate. I just usually either scribble or put a couple lines in there. So they'll they'll show up when I scan it into my computer. And you don't have to trace every single shadow to a T, but it doesn't hurt because it adds to the realism. And I'm making sure I'm staying in frame here. Okay, now there's a little bit of a uh, lighter area right here that I'm going to take advantage of for separation. And that's that seam in the paper, so I'm holding that down. See where it goes. There's no real, real distinct shape to it, so I'm just gonna be real pretty vague with it. Um, I talked about the lighter area in here, but I think it's faint enough that I can get away with ignoring the light area in here because we have that connection here. And I think this this one right here hopefully will suggest the muscles going into the neck. Now there is a slight separation of the shadows right here. They are all also somewhat connected, so I think I'm going to break it up here. But let me go ahead and finish where I've already started on the neck here. Now, although where that seam is is part of the pattern I'm working on right now because the line that we're separating with is way down here but I stop at the seam so that I can concentrate on holding the paper down when I get there so I draw up to it and then continue past it okay let me go ahead and start the shadow on the side here and this is just to break it up you don't have to but it, it just makes things easier and you see how closely this little hump in the leg or shoulder comes to the leg of the mare. So I may de slightly decrease the severity of that lump. So it's not as brittle in this green area or what would be a white area. And I'm gonna go ahead and go past that seam since I held it down. And right now I'm gonna work on the neck neck shadows here. Some of them may look a little funny, but uh, 
a young horse is going to have unique folds and textures because of the fact that the skin's not real taut. Now we have a faded area in here, so I'm, I'm thinking of how to do that. I may just do the distinct ones and, and just leave it that way. It's kind of faded so there's no real shape to the bottom of it. Because again, you cannot shade an H curl saw pattern. Okay, coming up to that scene in the seam in the paper again, so I'll be now you see the light area down here. Uh, that is part of the muscle muscle tone, so I'm going to use that to break it up a little bit and add some shape to it. Sh shadows suggest the light and light suggests the shadows. The lack of light is... Uh, uh, sounds too philosophical, but... <laughs> um, in most cases, the the premise of a scroll saw pattern is tracing the shadows because those shadows are the detail. I really hope that makes sense because I don't know how else to word it, but we got some faded shadows in here. So I am going to trace them in there. And I think y'all know what I mean when I talk about the hide, the skin of the bowl. The way I'm describing it is they haven't grown into their skin much. So that's why they have so much, so many folds and, and unique looks to them. And that's just a, showing the age of the horse. I haven't been around enough horses to tell you how old this one is. So... That's why I'm calling it a bull versus a colt or a billy. A colt is a male young horse and a billy is a female young horse. Now this shadow I think might translate weird but it is there so I might as well use it. That being said there are going to be other ones that I'm going to ignore. Let me go ahead and try to stick with the upper half here. This area here if you put it in a scroll saw pattern as is, it will look like it's a very bony bowl. Uh, the way it looks to me, these are just wrinkles. But I don't want it to translate onto a scroll saw pattern looking like it's a bunch of ribs showing through. So I'm going to eliminate those individual creases like that. I might make a general shadow shape altogether just to suggest the, the side and portion of the belly. You can do it however you want to. If you'd like to make things exactly the way they look in a photo, then go for it. You know, if, especially if it's a custom photo or a custom pattern. I'm talking about how I'm going to just ignore the fact that those are ridges. I may use the tops of them to suggest things, but you'll see I just completely ignored everything inside of there. Now, since we have a dark leg right here, I'm going to take advantage of this right here. This is what if this is either light reflecting off of the belly or just happens to be the way the coloring is on the horse. But in my opinion, this right here is what is called backlighting and it's a good separator when you're doing shadows. When you have two dark areas coming up next to each other, it helps break it up a little bit. And that's what I'm gonna do right here. We're gonna, I may thicken it up a little bit because that's a very thin light area. And again, I'm putting my finger there because that's where the seam the, of the two sheets of paper come together. And stop the leg there. And we've eliminated all the unneeded crap that could have happened in here to make it look funny. It's just, it's shadows. Right here on the, the rump here, I'm going to take advantage of where it goes here and here. That's going to be our pilot hole point because this this will suggest the shape of the rump there and the fact that it's so 
muscular and this is also how we're going to connect that the side of that neck now it might be relatively thin there and as with any scroll saw pattern if an area looks too narrow for you widen it there's no law saying you have to follow every line you see it all depends on your confidence level and I used to draw a lot so you may notice that I go back and forth with my pen instead of just making a solid line most of the time I'm usually practically sketching but that's just a habit of mine it's not to say you have to do it that way and I think I am going to widen that line or thicken I don't want this area in here to be brittle when I now I could have stopped it there and but I'm afraid that if I neglect showing the side of that neck it might look funny no see this is an example of me making decisions as I go so I sound indecisive but this is a thought process I think all of us will go through as we try to do these kind of things I'm going to connect the side of that neck still slightly thicker than it's shown and I'm going to connect it to this shadow here and that way it's broken up here I'm not going to go all the way up to the eye I'm just going to go here because your your eye will will finish a lot of the eyes um, in the <laughs> your eyes will finish a lot of the lines that are that are there in your mind it'll tell you okay that's that's the neck coming up to the head so you can break it apart okay so I think we got that area pretty good there's a couple little wrinkles here I could probably include because they are there but they don't look like bony ribs it may look like funny shadowing for a horse figure but again it's a bowl and that's just the way they look uh, and I apologize for the times where the picture isn't right side up for you but I do that so that I can draw from a certain direction it just feels that's more comfortable uh, we got a little bit of ridge here and I think I can bring that all the way back to the back of the horse to connect to the shadow here and I may change my mind once I get to the editing portion The reason I started doing mine on paper is because I, I to me it's easier. I don't, <laughs> I don't comprehend technical things real well. That's not dogging myself, it's just a fact. Um, so I started doing mine on paper because, you know, I mean, some people can draw with a, a computer mouse or a stylus. And I guess if I had that kind of technology, I would, but computer mouse, I cannot control near as easily as I, as I can a pen. So that is why I chose to do mine on paper, and I love realism. But that being said, in some cases, I've shot myself in the, the foot, so to speak, because people are either scared of detail or don't want to spend that long on a single project. and but I had to follow my passion. I love realism. There are a few that appreciate that and it's not to sound like, like a whiner, you know, it's just, it's a niche market, I guess. But especially if you're doing this for yourself or for a customer, there is a sense of pride when you can create your own patterns. Okay, we're almost done with the uh, hole here. Now there's a little bitty amount of backlighting right here on the front of that rear leg so I'm going to take advantage of that now if you find a picture that's detailed but will fit on a single sheet of paper you can you can print it out as just a single sheet of paper you don't have to make it uh, two sheets like I did it, it's, it's all what you want to do I like to get as much detail as possible, so that's why I choose to print them out in two or more sheets of paper.
and I kind of jumbled up my words when I talked about the light and the dark separation and what suggests the other. But by seeing this shadow and then this shadow here, that tells you there, there's the muscle tone of the leg. I mean, it, shadows really are important. And it's kind of the same in when you're drawing. A lot of people try to draw the lines to show the detail, but you're oftentimes drawing the shadows and that what's not a shadow ends up being light so it it it's so hard to explain so I don't know why I brought it up but <laughs> I hope you will you'll understand that uh, I'm gonna go to the inside here now there are lights and darks in here but the only light I'm really gonna concentrate on is right here and that's just to suggest the muscle tone but I'll start up here, and that goes right at the seam of the paper. I'm gonna go here, kind of come around here, and these are, okay, there's that line right here. So I'm not gonna bother drawing past that line because that would be senseless because I'd be tracing onto nothing. I don't know if it shows up on paper or not, but there is a light area right here that's showing muscle tone. But since that line's there, I'm just going to go around it and we'll work with that when we get to it on the other side. But I'm pretty confident these pen lines where I'm tracing are showing up because it's a relatively light colored horse. And I think you'll see, you know, that, that will somewhat give you an idea. Let me zoom out slightly so you're seeing more of it as I do it. But I think the, the pen lines are showing up really, really well on this one to show you, especially on a lighter, lighter colored horse. You, you can almost visualize what the pattern's going to look like uh, because I can't give you a sneak peek because once I untape it, trying to line it back up would be next to impossible. Very faint ligature or muscular shadow right there and I went a little below the line but that's fine as long as you know where to continue off of. Trying to think how I want to do. I want to make this this leg line come from this shadow or off of this shadow. But since that's on a separate leg, I may work it off of the the shadow here. I may regret that later, and I may change my mind. And I separated it slightly from this one because that is a separate shadow. So. I'm not on that portion of the pattern yet, so I can't really show you until I get to that other half. As far as what we can do on this half, I'm just about done with the, the bowl portion anyway, then we'll get to the mother. Not a lot of detail here, but I do see something in the lower half here that will be happening later. So I'm considering that when I just draw these single lines here, and that'll make sense when I go to do the other half. But now I'm going to move over to the mare. The lines may not show up as well because the mare is darker than the bowl, but you have that right on a finished piece to if you want to add color either with paint or stain. That's your right. Some people don't like to paint wood, but it, you can match these colors with, with stains. I'm guessing golden oak. I, I don't know. I totally, I'm throwing that out there, but if you want to make it as true to the photograph as possible, then you're more than welcome to use stain, but that can be a bit of a challenge as well.